Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna list all the sponsors tonight. Tonight's sponsors are in honor of Celia and Elliot Bracha's wedding tonight. I mean, Hashem bless, bless uh, Celia with a big, big mazel tov. Anonymous and successful Parnassus to get married repeatedly for Gabriel Ben Sara, Levi Yitzhak Godlitsky, and on his wife, Kayla Bas Alta Frida Devora, for giving birth to a healthy, cute baby boy, Michelle Quick Recovery, Anonymous in the, uh, in the honor of IDF and the IAF, Anonymous for Simcha, Shefa Hatzlacha, Ahabas Yisrael, Torah, Humility, Parnasa, Shalom Bayez, Hatzlacha, and Shudichim for Healthy Children for Aaron Ben Hega Rezel, Fega Sarva Basheva, Rivka Basia Bad Fega Sara, Yosef Ben Chana, Yosef Svi Ben Fega Sara, Yeshua Elaikam, Ben Fega Sara, Shmuel Tuba Ben Fega Sara, Ben Yom and Chaim Ben Fega Sara, Shidukim for Achabas Yusuf is based in Israel, Anonymous for Dad for Kol Israel, Shidukim for Bat Ora, Bat Miriam for Miriam and Zalman Wadaski, Anonymous for Rachel, Elisheva, Mushka, Bas, Shane, Asara, Devor, Leah, Bas, Shane, Asara, and Shalom, Dov, Baird, Shane, Asara. Maybe you're ready with the family, etc. Joseph Greenfield for the Rufus, Shalom, Moshe, Mordechai, Ben Hadassa. <coughs> also in appreciation of the classes. Also, Lili Shmad, Yachmiel, Daniel, Ben Tova, Basha, Bezrat Hashem, and got the success of Gadiel, Lili Sheva, Shef, Lili Sheva, Emily, Lili Sheva, Brandon, Malkus, Gadiel, Lili Sheva. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me well. Everybody, the sound is good, everybody? Good, I just want to make sure the sound is good. Perfect. Okay, so today's class, we're going to talk about, a little bit about anger management. We're going to talk about um, a few books. The book, the main book is going to be Never Get Angry Again. This book is by David Lee, Lee, Lieberman. We're going to talk another book about Let It Go. And we're going to also do, Bizrat Hashem, um, the book called Wisdom, and Rav Nachman's teaching. So today, obviously, there's a lot of leverage on anger. We know today's month. By the way, we're going to start the class, and afterwards, we're going to, we're going to be able to do Bizrat Hashem question and answers afterwards. So the, the main topic of today is obviously anger. Um, the reason why we're using anger this week is obviously is because of the month of Tevet. The month of Tevet is definitely a month that belongs to Esau. We're very prone to get angry this month. We're very prone to get tested. I'm sure people are going on this. They've already had a couple tough days. Um, and we really, really, really want to bring, bring awareness what makes us angry, how do we prevent it, etc. And this is really where we want to go with this today. So the first thing we need to understand is we're, we're, we have a tendency. Wherever there's anger, there's also a potential for bracha. So there's always, it's not that you just get angry in life. Every time Rav Nachman says something very, very special, less than, 50, less than 59, he says before blessing comes down to a person, he's going to get tested with anger. And if a person's able to withstand his anger, he's able to get the blessing. So it's not that I can just escape from anger, I'm going to be prone to be angry, I have chances to be angry, I'm going to get tested with anger. Because anger comes from the left side, and anytime there's a blessing, there's definitely, definitely, a, you're prone to get angry. So don't, don't think that, oh, I just get tested all day long and, and this is my life and I have to go through these struggles. No, wherever there's a test, there's an there's a opportunity for a blessing. So that's the first thing. Second thing, just before we go, we, we, we go into, the, into the class, we also have to understand that Rabbi Nachman says that your life is a war. You have people in your life that are, you know, each, each person in your life is, is a different nation. Um, there's some people that are angrier in your, in your families, there's some people that are more difficult to deal with. So we also have to recognize in, in general, we're not saved from, you know, just, um, you know, you, you, you want peace, but somehow we always get dragged into these arguments with family and family members. And as much as you want to try to have peace, you always somehow, you know, end up in some kind of mess all the time. And, and you shouldn't be discouraged by this because what Nachman said, this is definitely a good class for Moroccans. Yes, Stefan. Actually, this is sponsored for, the, for all the Moroccans. But you should be prone, you should understand that there's, you can't have a life of just too much peace. The reason why, obviously, is because when we get tested with difficult people in our lives, we, we have a chance to give them mercy, we have a chance to become better ourselves. But most importantly, it's a chance for us to really perfect our character, etc. So that, that's another thing. So the first thing, remember, when there's opportunities for blessings, for Parnassah, you're going to have anger. Second thing, you're definitely, definitely going to have tests in your life that are going to be with your family members, 
and you can't run away from them, there's nothing you can do. Even if you get into another family, it's just going to be a different argument. So don't, don't think that there's, everybody has it easy. Everybody's got this issue across the board. Rabbi Nachman said it 200 years ago, we all have this issue, we all have, we, we want peace, but just like Democrats and Republicans, they can never get along. Rabbi Nachman says, in the Zohar says, that man is a miniature world. All the nations are in his own family. And so, so Rabbi Nachman says, okay, so if this is it, let me not get married. Then he says, if you don't get married, the war is going to be in your own head. So we have an option to deal with the war outside of us, or we have the option to deal with the war inside of our heads. So that, that's just one thing we need to really, really understand. Another thing that we have to re really, really recognize is the Torah's definition of anger. Rabbi Nachman says that if a person is, with, is able to withhand, withstand his anger, he merits wisdom, he merits peace, he merits wealth, he merits um, happiness, he merits joy. There's a tremendous amount of um, blessings that we get if we're able to withstand our anger. Uh, Rabbi Nachman says the opposite is true also. We can if we get too angry too much, we can lose our wisdom, we can lose our wealth, we can lose our name, and we can eventually lose our family, God forbid. We know many people have lost... Um, you know, tremendous amount of, of blessings because of anger. And we need to, we, today we're going to be really, really talking about strategies on how to manage it and how to deal with it. Because there's some things that you, you know, you're not going to get saved in your life if you don't have some kind of strategy to work around this anger and how much it can cost you. Now, also, we also have to know that some signs, some fire signs, for example, Sagittarius, Leos, and, um, Sagittarius, Leos, and, uh, I believe um, Aries, they're more also, fire signs are more prone to have a quick fuse, where other signs are not as prone. So we know that also, based on also our birthday, you know, Leos have a hard, they have, they have more of an anger issue, Sagittarius, um, Aries have a very, very, they're very perfectionist, you know, they like to control everything, you know, so if things don't go their way, they, you know, they have a quick fuse and they get angry quickly. So this also, we, have, we also have some predisposed uh, situations based on how you know you're born and, and, and the tendency. Um, Rabbi Nachman also says in lesson four that each one of us has a predominant characteristic based on the elements of earth, fire, water, and air, and each each one of these have a tendency for a negative aspect. And any kind of sickness is because there's too much imbalance in the elements. So when we have earth, fire, water, and air. We have harmony, but when there's a dysfunction in one of the elements, such as too much fire, that can cause sickness, that can cause all kinds of things. Um, somebody's asking about cancers. Cancers, their problem is, is not the fire out, the fi fire is inside of them. The, the resentment, so for example, water, a lot of water signs, they don't have the power, they're not going to scream, they're going to hold it in and, and resent you and, and have the inward anger which is a different form of anger. So we just let's, just let's just redefine forms of anger. Anger does not just mean screaming out. That's more of the expressive way, but there's also in, in, internal anger. Um, and if we could just look, for example, what, what are some examples that you do have anger? Some examples of anger are here. Let me just get to the point. Obviously today, doing this class, there was tremendous amount of, of tests and anger for me today. So thank God I was very prepared for this. For example, any kind of resentment, revenge, revenge is a form of anger, jealousy is a form of anger, vindictiveness is a form of anger, hatred, uh, argumentative hostility, impatience, frustration, aggression, violence, all of these are forms of anger. Specifically resentment. Resentment is very, very, um, this happens in marriage all the time. And, and let me just give you just a, a, a primary example where you see this a lot. All of a sudden, the wife will come home. The wife will all of a sudden say, you know what? I'm going to make the house really, really nice today. I'm going to cook. I'm going to make, make sure everything's beautiful in the house. I'm going to make sure the kids are fed. So when my husband comes home, he's relaxed, he can eat, etc. And all of a sudden, what happens? The husband comes home from a very, very tough day at work. He throws the keys on the, on the counter, doesn't look at his wife, and says, what's for dinner? He doesn't see... All the thi oh my God, the whole house is put together, the kids are asleep, like all of a sudden the whole circus is, is over with, but he just comes home and he just puts the keys on the, on the 
on the on the on the counter and says, "What's for dinner?" So all of a sudden, the guy's thinking, "Look at me! I'm pulling all the weight in this marriage. I have to go kill myself at work." And my wife just stays home, does nothing. The wife is saying, "Look at this! I did the whole house. I prepared the whole house for him. Took care of all the kids. Everything's fine in the house." And all of a sudden, he doesn't even say thank you for anything. So you can just just see the simple example. The husband's in his own world, saying he's getting the wrong end of the deal. He's pulling all the weight. The wife is saying, I'm pulling all the weight, and I'm going to appreciate it. So what happens? They sit down to dinner. They don't talk to each other. They go to sleep, and here we go. Now we've got resentment. There's a first case of resentment. And what happens? This keeps on happening over and over again. And then all of a sudden, everything becomes a major, major issue. So we have to recognize this is very, very important Taurus principle. You have to appreciate you must appreciate your, your, your spouse because if you don't appreciate, they're thinking, oh my God, I'm doing all this for you. And you're thinking, oh my God, I'm doing all this for you. And if you guys don't communicate, you're gonna have a tremendous amount of resentment. And that resentment all of a sudden gets bottled up. And just like you take a Coca-Cola and you open it up after shaking it for like a week or, or, two, or three weeks, boom, explosions over the smallest things that happen. So this is the number one thing in marriage you have to appreciate each other. I can't tell you how, how important it is because when you don't appreciate, that's the beginning of he's into his own thing, I'm into my own thing, and you, and you just, all of a sudden, you don't talk. And this resentment just builds up and builds up and builds up. And the more resentment we build up, the more we start to disassociate, and the more we start, the more we, we lack blessings in our life. So that's the first thing I've seen a lot is this concept of resentment by not appreciating each other. Very, very important. Another very common example of anger is this expectations. Like we all of a sudden, we feel like the whole world owes us everything. Like I'm owed everything in my life. And you can see sometimes you'll see a girl, she'll buy a thousand dollar outfit, and next thing you know, she doesn't get any compliments. So what happens, she gets pissed at her date. Her date says, you know, he wasn't nice to me. What happens? She had, a, she had an expectation that she'd get all these compliments in the dress. Next thing you know, the more you look for, the more you look for compliments, and the more you look for things, the less you get it. So what happens? She comes home. She's snapping at her at her boyfriend for not complimenting enough, and you could see somebody could, could turn become angry just because they didn't get enough, you know, getting get enough compliments on the dress, versus buying something and going it, not 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 depending on her. So this is something very common, that the more we want kavod, the more we want honor, the more we want, we expect people to respect us, the more we expect it, the least likely we're going to get it. So that's very, very important. Sometimes our expectations are sometimes creating tremendous amount of anger because all of a sudden we have this expectation that the, we're owed everything in the world, and next thing you know, it doesn't come true, and next thing you know, we're upset, and that's only because of our own honor. So you have to be very careful to turn your expectations into appreciation. It's a very, very important message on anger. But don't walk around like the world owes you everything. Don't walk around like everything, but everybody owes you everything. Walk around with appreciation, and you can see people want to be around happy people. But when you walk around with all these expectations, you're walking around, next thing you know, this doesn't go your way, that doesn't go your way, but all of a sudden, we're gonna, all, everything turns to anger. Everything turns to anger because you can get your way. And this, is, and this is where we could see this very, very common. The more you look for something, the more you want kavod, the more you want honor, the more you want respect, somehow you, you never end up getting it. You get the opposite. You, people don't want to deal with you. So that's another thing. We want to show kavod to God. We don't really want to show kavod to other people. Very, very, very important message. Another, another amazing concept on just you know, anger is, is fear. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of fear today, obviously. The whole world is in, in fear mode. Not, not the whole world, but the majority of people are in fear mode. And you can see that, you know, the more fear they have, the more they want to control things. You can see that the government are trying to control you. Um, you know, everybody's trying to control you nowadays. You know, they want to control where you're living, where you, are you vaccinated, are you not vaccinated, are you this, are you this. It's just a tremendous amount of fear. So we always know the formula is always that when you have fear, you're going to end up controlling. And that's something, you know, if we're in a relationship where we start having fear, that the other person's unloyal, or if all of a sudden we have an insecurity in ourselves, then we start all of a sudden thinking that everybody's unloyal to you. So you have to be very, very careful with fear, because fear will lead you to control. And then when you lose control, that leads to anger. So remember, Rabbi Nachman says, very, very important, 
that humility is the ultimate key. But anytime we lose control, that leads to anger. This is why we don't, we don't, we're not happy, you know, if our kids don't listen to us, um, you know, all of a sudden we get angry, uh, or, or any time of losing control. But the only reason we want to control things in the first place is because we are insecure, or because we have fear. Because otherwise, if you're very healthy and you're in a healthy relationship, you give each other space. You don't seek to control everything. But the more controlling you are, the more you're going to, um, the more it's rooted really in fear. And anything that, any time of losing control, we definitely end, end up becoming anger. So this is why, if you think about an anger issue, if you have an anger issue, I'm angry with my boyfriend, I think he's talking to somebody. I'm angry with my wife, I think she's doing this. So there's sometimes we, we have so much paranoia and so many fears and, and so many things that we, all, this, all of a sudden these things are not even real. And then you could take a beautiful relationship and ruin it because uh, constantly accus accusing other people of, of doing this and that. So this is, I see this a lot. It's very, very important that you work on your insecurities and you work on having a trust mindset before you get into relationships because I'll, I'll, anytime, you know, imagine being with a partner and they always think that, you know, you're cheating on them. Oh my God, he's stealing. He's stealing from me. He's doing that for me. He's doing that. And the whole day that person is thinking, you know, how am I going to control him? You know what? I'm going to take away this paycheck. I'm going to make sure he does this. And, and, and everything becomes a, a threat. So this is where we want to, you know, you want to have a, a, a good, healthy relationship is a relationship where there's space. Love creates space. Very, very important that love creates space. If there's no love, there's fear, there's no space, there's suffocation, there's control, there's anger, etc. So make sure before you're getting into a relationship that you're with a person that has, that has self-confidence, that, that has good self-esteem, because otherwise you know, you're going to be in, a, in, a, in the middle of a CSI uh, uh, Brooklyn uh, episode every day. Everything becomes a crime scene, you know? <laughs> and you don't want to be in these crime scenes, uh, everything's, everything's an issue. Um, and that's definitely, we have enough triggers in life, we don't want to have inner triggers. That's definitely something that I've definitely seen too much investigation out of paranoia. And usually this happens because we bring old news, old relationship, old messes in relationships, and we bring them into new relationships. And when we bring them into new relationships, we just sabotage everything. So this is why, I, I, you know, we, we do this classes because we always end up getting the same patterns in life. And this is why Hashem teaches us how important we have to be careful that these constant, you know, constant patterns come up, it's a sign that we're not really doing the deep work. Um, you know, it's very, very important. Nachman's always, his message was always, you got to do a lot of deep work. And the deep work is when you're alone with your Creator, speaking to your Creator, working on these issues, trying to ask Him to build trust, versus all of a sudden, you know, everything goes wrong, etc. So you can see the majority of the dating scene, God willing, have December, December 16th, it's just way too much fear. Too much fear and too much insecurities. How is it going to work? Is it, <clears throat> it going to work out? Is it not going to work out? And when you come with a fear mindset, you, you, you can't succeed. Um, and it's funny how we, we speak about this a lot of, most of the times, that usually the blessings come after the marriage, not before the marriage. So, you know, sometimes we're going in there with too much fear. We don't even want to take the responsibility. We don't go in the right way. We end up just getting disappointed because we have too much fear, etc. So this is something that, you know, you have to have trust in God. Because if you don't have trust in God, you're going to end up becoming, you're going to have fear. You're going to be very controlling. You're going to be very angry. You're going to be, God feel, leads to depression. And that leads to isolation. And this is all, like Rabbi Nachman says, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's a consciousness that we need to have. Very, very important. Another very, very important about dealing with anger is the concept of patience. It's very, very important. Rabbi Nachman speaks many, many things about patience. We have to trust the process, not rush the process. Sometimes we get very, very... Um, we, get, we just get fed up in life. We, just, we, want, we want things quicker in life. We... we you know, we feel like we, sh we should have had things, you know, life wasn't expected what I, what I was supposed to have. So we end up rushing the process. Instead of rushing the process, you need to start trusting the process. Rabbi Nachman says patience is, is required in order for you to get any kind of spiritual attainment. Before you re receive any kind of spiritual attainment, you have to know how to properly have patience and breathe. 
The reason why you have to have this patience is because when we sin or when we get angry, we didn't have patience. So the ultimate rectification in life really is to go do the opposite of what you did before. So patience is very, very important. And, and the key element to patience is definitely faith. Faith gives you patience. When we don't have faith, we don't have patience. So if you ask yourself when in areas in your life that you know, specifically Sagittarius, you know, fire signs, whether it's uh, Aries, uh, again, they, they, they were excited, but no patience, no patience. So it's, it's very, they're very critical sometimes, et cetera. So it's very, very important. Faith gives you patience. There's a connection. Faith, you recognize this is exactly what I should have right now. This is exactly what's good for me. But when we lack faith, we lack patience. And then what happens, all our, all our goals, we get frustrated easily. And when we get frustrated easily, our goals do not become, do not flourish. And instead, these, flour, these goals abort. They become, God forbid, a spiritual abortions instead of flourishing. You have to have patience because a lot of the times it's a test to see if you're doing it for the right reason. So this is why you have to do a lot of breathing, a lot of breathing, a lot of breathing, a lot of looking at the big picture, trusting the process versus rushing the process and chasing things. That's another sign that we're going to get disappointed easily, such as excessive anger. Very, very, very important concept is, is this concept. Another very, very important thing we need to speak about is hold, how much you hold in. You know, if we, if we don't have proper, you know, uh, places, for example, uh, proper places to, to let out, uh, you know, some kind of energy. Because remember, anger has a lot of energy. So if you don't have an energy place to put this energy, for example, working, you know, a person should take this energy and work out. The person should take this energy and do chesed. It's not that the energy is bad. It's just if the energy is not... If it's turned inward, instead of turning outward towards something productive, then all of a sudden you start accumulating, you start accumulating all this kind of pressure. We also need to understand that it's not that we are, it's not that people make us angry. It's all people do is all they do is really, they trigger what we're really holding inside. So it's another thing we need to understand. If somebody's bothering us, if somebody's making us angry, it's really not about them. It's really about something inside of me that they have triggered. So stress, we think stress is external. No, stress is internal. Just like labor pains, when you have a baby, the pain is not outwards, it's inner pain. So stress is not external, stress is internal. Very, very important. Don't, don't, don't think, oh, I need, I need to move here to be, more, to be more peaceful. I need to move to this relationship to be more peaceful. I need to go into that relationship to go peaceful. It's not about the relationship, it's about your state of mind your state of mind. So remember, you cannot, it's not possible for somebody to get you angry. We are angry and they just set us off. Because if you, that same day, you want a million dollars and I promise you there's not one person in the world that will upset you that day, even if they told you your hair looks terrible, you don't know what you're doing, you're not smart, you would not care. You would not care what they told you if you want a million dollars that day. Because it's teaching you that it's not about what they're saying, it's about the state you're in that determines what things mean. So when we're in a good state, such as where we, 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 we take our energy in the right places, we, we pray with our Creator to, to help us with our emotions, and we, we get ourselves in a prime state, in a good state, then really nobody can get you angry. Because you're going to be all of a sudden let go of all that. But when we're not in a good state, we, things take on different meanings. It's a very, very important message that you can't avoid this issue. It's an inner problem of being in a negative state. And when we're in a negative state, things take on different meaning. Very, very important message. That we have to be careful that we don't accumulate things. We don't accumulate a lot of anger, a lot of built-in resentment, etc. Other ways that Rav Nachman says that you can work on your anger is definitely, definitely working on recognizing that when we do lose anger, if you're, if you're a Torah scholar, you lose your wisdom. If you're a uh, businessman, you lose your money. If you're uh, getting enough leverage in your lives to see, you know, where is this, how much of this anger is costing me? You know, where is this anger costing me in my life? What is it doing to me in my life? And why am I so angry in the first place? You know, I have to ask yourself, and it's usually dealt with, sometimes we, we, we have a lot of traumas in the past that we haven't let go. 
And as you start letting go, like we said before, we start increasing our consciousness, then we're able to now let go of others. Because remember, we're, when we're in a merciful state, when, we're not forget, when, we're not, when we forgive ourselves, and we're in a very, very good mindset, what happens is the first thing you're going to do is look for a chance for forgiveness. If I know that if I forgive that person, I get forgiven in heaven, I'm going to take that opportunity for me. That means that forgiveness is really for me, it's not for them. Because whoever forgives people, God forgives them. So you would think of yourself, what in the world are you thinking holding anger when you have a chance to be forgiven at the same time? But when we're not in a good emotional state, what happens, we're always making everything about us. That's a true sign of growth when you're able to see the, the, the whole perspective and you're able to see the whole angle and the whole picture versus I'm getting attacked, I'm getting abused, I'm getting this, I'm getting this. That's teaching you that you're, that, that you're not seeing the big picture. Our emotions are, are clouding our, our judgments. So these are very, very, very important. We have, we have to get these down. Because remember, today, EQ, emotional intelligence, is greater than IQ, period. I think we've, we all know that we have, uh, I'm sure you've gone out with potential, uh, potential people and, and you've dealt with people, and there was, just because people are smart, doesn't mean they're emotionally smart, they're emotionally intelligent. And we've seen that many times. Today, you really, really look for emotional intelligence. How, is, how does the person handle a rough situation in his life? Does he have a moon now? How does the person handle life? How does he handle trauma? How does he handle things? What is he doing with it, with his anger? Where does he channel it? Where does he channel it? Could everybody, is, did the feet get lost or everything okay? Everything okay? Seems to be okay. Did we lose a feed now? Perfect. Is everything, everybody can hear me? Yes? Okay. So that's another thing we really, really need to understand that, that concept. To not, not, to not let this, your energy level, get people take your energy. And that's one thing is when you, you always want to ask a person, if you have a potential spouse, potential, how do you, how do you deal with stress? How do you deal with this? You know, how do you deal? Are you an angry person? Where's your consciousness? This is a very, very, very important message. Um, another thing we want to look at is low self-esteem. Obviously, low self-esteem and anger are very, very connected. Um, there's no way you're going to fix an anger issue without fixing the self-esteem issue. That's, that's very, very important. And the reason why is because to the extent that we have low self-esteem, we have a very, very narrow perspective. And, the, and when we have a narrow perspective, then every, everything makes us angry. It doesn't take much to be angry if you have a very narrow perspective. So just think about people today, you know, they get upset over the littlest things in the world. It's because, you know, they have a very narrow perspective. They have a very narrow way of looking at things. So this is one thing when you, have, when you start building your self-esteem, you start increasing your knowledge, you widen your perspective, and little things don't bother you as much anymore. You expect to have hiccups, you expect to have situations, but you're not bent over shape, you're not bent over that. Very, very important message to understand. We're going to take questions in about five to ten minutes. Um, so, we, and anybody wants to ask any questions. Rav Nachman says that it's very, very important that sometimes today, you can see today, a form of communication becomes emotional blackmail. What is emotional blackmail? Emotional blackmail is, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm not gonna to talk to you. <laughs> so anybody who tells you, if I don't, you don't do this for me, I'm not gonna to talk to you, they're using emotional blackmail. And this is a very common thing today. You know, somebody you don't like what somebody does to you, you just ghost them, you, 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 you know, you just, you, you resent them, you, you hold anger. The reason why we don't wanna do that is because that person itself, you're rooting your own vessels in heaven. Because the Torah says you're not allowed to harbor hate in your heart. You're not allowed to seek revenge. It's not easy. Sometimes you might need boundaries from certain people, but you're not allowed to use emotional blackmail. Basically saying, give me what I want, or I'll punish you with withdrawing, resentment, or etc. That is called emotional blackmail. We can't do that. And that's happening way too much. The better question we should always ask ourselves is why did I get so angry? Why, what, what in that person what did that person say that really triggered something inside of me that really bothered me? We want to turn it from emotional blackmail into a lesson, 
into more of a lesson of why I was so bucked, triggered by that person, why I was so angry by that person. That's what you should be really asking, not I'm withdrawing from that person, etc. Extremely, extremely important. Because remember, like we said before, when there's blessings, there's going to be tests for anger. That's the way it is. You can't do anything about it. It's the way God made the world. He made the world that north and gold come from Gevura, come from the left side. So it's very, very common to get tested over and over with your patients, and then all of a sudden something good happening to you. This is a common thing. So when you're looking at it, when you have a big vision, you're not gonna you're not gonna look at the, every little item to ruin your day. You're gonna look at the, the the whole day versus just having a you know living in the, living in in a you know uh, in resentment, etc. So it's very these are these are very important message. If we want to talk about the, the biggest energy that we have, is definitely the energy of Keter. The energy of Keter, Rav Nachman says, is your ability to have deep breaths. When you have deep breaths, when you have deep contemplation, when you see the big picture, when you're able to have extension, remember, extension of breath leads to wealth. That means I'm, I'm able to respond. I'm able to see the big picture. I'm getting tested. I'm able to see this is not about me. This is what we're referring to as extension of your breath. Your breath is indication of your state. Your breath means to be extended. Breathing long breaths versus having short venting breaths. You see the difference? Your breath, you always have to pay attention to your breath, is indicates the state of mindset that you're in. This is what Ramnathan speaks about. You have wealth comes from extension of breath. So think about your day and find a way to make your day longer by responding to things versus reacting to things. That's a primary way. Another way we can look at make the day longer. It could be, for example, um, waking up with a brand new attitude, saying that today is a brand new day, today is an opportunity today, today, is a, uh, today I might get challenged, but the challenges bring opportunity. So your attitude, your, your patience, and all these things have a big, big indication on how, you, how well wealth comes to you versus having a short breath. Short breath, Rav Nachman says, is, leads to anger. So when we're not breathing, we're not able to contemplate, etc. It's another very, 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 very important. Uh, Rav Nachman suggests that whoever has, you know, deals with anger should spend minimum, minimum 20 to 30 minutes talking about anger and asking God to remove this midah from him. He has to speak to him at length, speaking, asking him to remove it. So sometimes, not just the psychology of it, but you have to, physically, you need to pray to create the vessel so, because if you want something bad enough, you're going to pray to God, I need, I, you have to take away this anger from me. It's destroying my shalom bayit. It's destroying my business. It's destroying my relationship. It's destroying my future relationships. You have to beg God to be able to save you from that. Um, another thing for men to do is to go into the mikvah, to go into humility. Um, anything to deal with humility is basically the opposite of anger. Because between you and me, a humble person cannot be angered. A humble person cannot be insulted. They don't make it about that. But an arrogant person makes everything about them. And this is where the real, real message in this class is the more we look at the big picture, the less we're going to be able to be angry, etc. If you want, we can start taking some questions. Any questions so far? Any questions on, on, on anger? Any questions? We can continue. None so far? How does one deal with anger with a family member inflicting narcissist abuse? So again, some, sometimes we have to deal with, we have to put boundaries. Because remember, it's not very easy for you to deal with people that are, that are going to trigger you. So there's times where Nachman says, Nachman spoke many times that if a person has a person who's very evil or very toxic, that he, that he needs to run away from that person. So first, what I would recommend is boundaries. You have to put boundaries. The more you put boundaries in your life, the more you're able to say, okay, I could deal with this person, but right now, right now. I'll be able to deal with them in the future. Doesn't mean you have to fix something right now, but there's times you're gonna be, you have to have boundaries or you're gonna end up becoming burnt out. So it's very, very important. Boundaries or burnout. So you have to have boundaries 
And then you have to recognize the reason why they, they, that person is a narcissist or that person is, 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 is treating you like that is because that person's not well. He's not well. This is the way he, you know, he, he, you know, he takes his anger on a person. So I wouldn't take it personal, but sometimes you do need to. When I tried to control my anger, even after doing the 40 day challenge, sometimes we're, we're, sometimes there's other things that make us angry also. Let's just be, let's get this other thing. For example, how we eat. If you're always tired, you're going to be more irritable. So that's period. The, the way you, the way you move, your, your, how you exercise, you know, how you eat. This is, I mean, when I'm in a, when I'm, when I, when, when a person fe eats the wrong food, he feels terrible. He knows he shouldn't have eaten that. He feels bad about himself. And then what's going to happen? He's going to get irritable very quickly. So remember, it's very important that our mood is basically shattering our self-esteem. So sometimes when we don't feel good about ourselves, we like to just dump it on other people. So sometimes people don't feel good about themselves and you become the, the target for people to, to, throw, um, you know, to throw their negative energy on you. On you. So that's why another thing is mood equals self-esteem. So when I'm in a good, when I, when I proper, when I have a healthy self-esteem, I'm going to eat better. When I take care of myself, I'm going to be, feel better about myself. The less likely I'm going to end up dumping my secure insecurity on somebody else. So it's very important to have a healthy regimen also, because if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to be tired. You're going to be irritable. You're going to be hungry. And it's, it's eventually you're going to, you're going to come to that. I think there was another question. How do we deal with, how do we deal with emotional blackmail? How can you deal with anger with a person who's constantly, uh, again, you have to think of, there's unfortunately, I think this is a question. How do you deal with anger when somebody's constantly emotionally blackmailing you? Sometimes people have a two-year-old brain. You know, what does a two-year-old do when they get angry? They scream. They, they don't, they can't process it. So sometimes, unfortunately, when you deal with people that, are, that don't know how to deal with their emotions, you have to put boundaries or sometimes you have to, you know, you, you can't teach people who don't want to be taught. But there's many people that when, when we, when we ghost people, when we have emotional black pill towards people, what happens is our creators doing the same thing to us, period. So the way you treat people below is the way your creator teaches, treats you above. So this is a very, very important. If you ask yourself, how do you want to be treated below? How do you treat people? is an indication of how you get treated above. And when you have healthy self-esteem, you end up treating yourself better and you end up treating other people better. So you can see the difference. People that don't have healthy self-esteem, they, they're, they're not able to treat others well. So how do you know a person has healthy self-esteem? If you're able to treat yourself well and treat others well, etc. Again, you know, many times, you know, it's very, very important. This emotional blackmail thing, it's just rampant. It's too much. You, you can't just blackmail people because they don't do what you want. So that's another thing. We really have to grow in consciousness. It's really, really a grown consciousness. And that's where you see it again. I think Naomi's saying exactly right. When you grow your consciousness, then you recognize not everything's about you. It's not going to be, you're not going to make everything about you. You're not going to make their problem your problem. But when we don't grow in consciousness, they, everything becomes your problem. And this is where everything goes really go back to consciousness. In a higher consciousness, we see things completely, completely different. In a low consciousness, we just look for people as ex people that we can, you know, blame for our things or people that we can, you know, uh, pr you know, any, any, any form of not taking responsibility when we when we're in a low consciousness, that's what we end up doing. Exactly. From my personal experience, women are willing to change and work on the relationship willingly when the problem is in the marriage. Yeah, again, you have also, unfortunately, men have, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of other problems, such as, you know, when men are not, you know, properly in a good mental state because of their, uh, let's say, their physical activity, that also throws off your emotions. You know, Nachman says that a person who constantly spills a seed, everybody's going to, People in his family are going to get affected also, not just him. Because when a person's doing it in an addiction, or when a person's doing things that he's not supposed to, he's not bringing light to his house, he's bringing darkness. So all of a sudden they become the, you know, they become the object of, of his, his, his frustration and his anger and etc. And that's unfortunately today we don't have enough, 
emotional intelligence classes in the, in the Torah world. We were not, this is not stressed enough. Where Rabbi Nachman says, if you have an anger problem, you better make an appointment for 30 minutes a day and speak to your creator. Because it's that problem is so bad that if this is not fixed, it's going to sink the whole ship down. So the difference between the breast level approach is, you better, you better do what you have to do to fix this problem. Because this problem is, is basically sinking everything in your life. Parnasa, relationships, etc. Get enough leverage where you say, I have to take accountability for this. This is where Malcolm's message is very, very strong. And he says, you, you're blocking, the, the anger is blocking God's light. It's not allowing the light to come in. So that when a person recognizes, he learns everything about anger. He learns the causes of anger. He listens to classes on anger. He talks to his creator about anger. He's going to get results. He's going to get results. He's going to get results. I think we had another. How do you deal with childhood traumas? Um, again, you have to go to. You have to deal with therapy. You have to go to therapy, and sometimes there's EMDR therapy. There's many, many other childhood therapies. But again, the same concept that a father would never treat a child the wrong way if he was healthy or if he was not. You know. But sometimes you have to recognize our parents. They went through tough times, uh, and they had their own issues. So sometimes they weren't able to give you as much as love as they wanted to. Even if they tried, they, they, were, they were too stressed out. So you have to also give them the benefit of doubt that they tried as hard as they can. And if they could have given you love, they would have given you love. But when we, as children, we have, we're very egocentric, so we don't know the difference. So as, e as children, we make, we make everything about us. Either I'm in the path of my parents' happiness, or I'm the cause of my parents' unhappiness. So we don't know how to process uh, these things. So basically, you have to go into the past and reprocess your childhood. You have to reprocess by, by recognizing that your parent was not able to give you. That's what he didn't give you. It really wasn't about you or, or you not being good enough, etc. in life. It's very, we need to get that message down. Um, because otherwise you're holding, you know, like we said many times, sometimes we create, you know, these, these unfortunately, we get into traumatic situations. So sometimes because we're not in a good mental state, Rabbi Nachman says our imagination makes the story much worse than it is, um, and it's very, very important. So we don't want to make things worse than it is. We want to view it as is, not make it worse than it is. And sometimes, when we're not in a good state, we do that. And that's due to our not being the simcha, not being happy, not being in a good state. Our imagination just makes the story much worse than it is. Very, very important message, we have to really get that. Because it's, it's enough to deal with the Yitzhahara, but you don't want to add your own ima imagination to the evil inclination, making the situation just completely despair, etc., and everything. Um, other methods that I recommend is Wim Hof. Anybody who knows about Wim Hof breathing, um, you can look it up. Wim Hof, Wim Hof breathing. It's, it's, it's a, you can look it up on YouTube. It's an 11-minute video. You can do it once or twice a day. It has, it's, it's magic. It's completely magic. Um, it, it just it turns on your endorphins and, and, you, and, and you get into like a very, very calm place. So that's another thing, amazing meditation, Wim Hof. Uh, another thing is also just regular meditation, noticing your thoughts, noticing when you're getting angry versus just taking everything so personal. Really taking everything so personal. Remember, our Yetzirah, specifically some of us have a harder time that we take everything so personal. And if you took everything personal today, then you're giving away your energy. Anytime we take things too personal, it's a sign that we're giving away our energy. That people are controlling us. They're controlling our moods, they're controlling our happiness. So when you really work on yourself, and you really, really work on yourself, you'll recognize that you'll have more energy because you'll not be, people will not take control of your, of your feelings and they'll never they'll take control of your energy. And that's where you start reaching a higher frequency in a higher consciousness, you recognize, wow, I'm not giving away my energy because somebody's having a bad day, etc. So it's a very, very important concept. How do you deal with your own personal anger when it stems from addiction such as gambling? Yeah, so, so again, I had a gambling issue. But for example, when I wanted to gamble a lot when I was younger because I lacked self-esteem and I wanted to make money rich. So there was, and that was rooted in uh, uh, you know, not getting enough love. Whatever, there's always a root cause of the gambling addiction, um, you know that's the problem. So we, again, without working on the self-esteem issue, how are you dealing with the gambling issue? It's not possible. The name of the breathing method is called Wim Hof breathing. 
W-I-M-H-O-F-F, Wim Hof. It's an 11 minute YouTube video. Um, I, I, I do maybe you know, once, once every three, four days, depending on the state. And it really brings you back to synergy. It just brings you back to a very, very uh, calm place where you start responding to things versus reacting to things. Remember, we have never apologized the way we responded. We always apologize the way we reacted. Nobody act, Nobody apologizes for a respond because a respond, you respond with, with dots. You think about it, you respond. Reaction is strictly, strictly from your emotions. So your ability to respond versus react is based on how, what, 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 what are you using? Are you using your emotions or are you using your, your, your intelligence? On, on viewing that situation easily. And this is, again, there's so many benefits of, of holding your anger because, you know, you'll be able to see it's a, it's a heart, it's a test, it's this, and you'll be able to be more successful in all areas of your life. Your relationships will get better, you'll be more merciful, you'll be more forgiving, you'll have a lot more energy, and these are things that really change your life. Everything changes. But when we don't change this, we become angry, we become irritable, we become, become moody, we, all of a sudden we, we, we talk bad to people, our relationships go sour, we project everything on them. Opportunities that could, could be good, next thing you know, we don't, we don't view them as a good opportunity, we view them as threats, and we're constantly drained out. So that's the negative side of all this. This is why, I mean, it, it, it seems to be so, so, so important. Um, like my, my schedule is definitely waking up in the morning super early, the reason why is because our sages say when you wake up early in the morning, there's a lot, you have a lot more clarity. So you, you can get a lot more done. So I'll, I'll wake up early, I'll go into breathing, I'll go into uh, music, I'll go into meditation, I'll go into a, uh, I'll learn. It, it's very hard to get me angry when I'm in that state. It's very hard to get you angry. When you're in a good state, it's very hard to get angry. But when, when you're not in a good state, it's very easy to be able to get triggered. So this is a, your 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 rituals are as a result of what you would be what you, the results you end up getting in life. Any other questions? Any other questions so far? Any other questions? Any other questions? Any anybody have any questions on anger, etc.? Again, I want to repeat: this is a must for everybody. This book is a must. It's it's a, it's, it's basically the path of surrender. Um, this is a must. This book is, is just... It, it, I, I literally hold this... Rabbi Nachman's books and this book is a book that I'm constantly holding with me all the time because I have to constantly tell myself, let it go, let it go, let it go because I'm so cautious to not hold things in. So I constantly have to let it go, let it go, let it go, which is really surrendering. Surrendering, stop making it about you, stop thinking about yourself all the time. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And then you have so much more energy. You have so much more energy when you're able to let things go. And it's just so much weight becomes taken off your shoulders. But the more you hold on to things, the more you stress, stressful, stressful. Stress. It's the opposite. And again, another great book is, is Never Get Angry Again. David Lieberman has, it's a great book on just strategies on, on how to, what makes us angry, et cetera, et cetera. So guys, I recommend strong, Breathe. This month, you're going to get tested. This month is Tibet. The, the, the emotion of the month is anger. The day has different energy than last month. It's going to be like this for 30 days or 28 days. This is the energy. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Think about some extra breathing. Do a little more prayers to be safe from this. The, try to be nice to your spouses. Don't, don't, don't be irritable. You know, look at these. You know, look at the big picture this month. Be careful not to lose the light of Hanukkah on just constant impulsivity and etc. And again, those of us who are fire signs, those Mor those of us who are Moroccan, you have a lot more work to do with other than others. Somebody asked me about Gemini. Um, what are the issue with the Gemini's? Again, anytime you have an issue with with air, air signs. The problem with the air signs is they get their their anger becomes frustration. Um, because sometimes they, they start too many things. In Gemini sometimes they'll, they'll start too many projects or they'll start too many things and they'll never get them done. So air, Air's problem is not that they're, they have this anger, they're the opposite. When they're angry at somebody, they just ghost them. 
they just don't talk to them. <laughs> Their problem is more of a, you know, not being able to accomplish tasks. So when I don't accomplish tasks, I start getting frustrated because I can't get anything done. And when I can't get anything done, I become angry at myself. So eventually you have to be able to, you know, you need tasks and you need to be able to do that. And that's very important where air signs have a hard time with structure and they feel like all of a sudden they can't get anything done. So they get frustrated very easily because nothing's going their way because they need to, again, they need to have structure. It's very important. It's very, very important. Leos, Leos are, are very passionate, you know, they're the life of the party. But again, they don't like to be told what to do. Leos do not like to be told what to do. And if you tell them what to do, they get angry. So they have to, you have to be careful for a constructive criticism as a Leo. Um, my, my twins are Leos, you know. I, I, if I tell them how great they are, they love it. Oh, but if, you, if I tell them one thing that's wrong, forget it. They, they, they go nuts. And this is the, the, the explosiveness of a Leo, but they're so warm and, and the life of the party and they have so much joy. But each one of us, we have to be really, really careful uh, of that. You know, some of those, for example, Capricorns, what I've seen with anger with Capricorns is that Capricorns are very, 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 very materialistic, I usually see. Uh, and they're Earth. So sometimes they get angry with when they get stuck in life. When they get st their stubbornness becomes a form of anger that I've seen where they, things don't go their way, remember it's earth, and they just become stubborn, so they'll build like walls. Remember, a wall is a form of anger too. Building a wall is, is a, like an emotional sabotage. Emotional, um, you know, it's just like cut, you know, putting walls up, too many walls up, versus being more forgiving and all that. So that's where the stubbornness is, is extended. My ex is Gemini and I'm a Leo. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough, that's tough. Anybody, again, you have the where a person who's a, who's a fire sign needs to use this fire for passion. Use the fire in the gym. Use the fire for passion. Use the fire to speak to people. Use the fire to motivate yourself. Use the fire the right way. Fire is not bad, but it has to be motivate people. Use the fire to motivate. The type of music I listen to, I listen to some Nissan Black a little bit, but more, more focused music. Specifically in the mornings, I listen to like focus music. Um, I listen to, um, you know, I used to listen to other music, but more, when I meditate, I'll meditate more to music with no words, because I just want to be able to get myself in a, in a peak state, in a peak state. But I've worked myself, again, Scorpios, remember, Scorpios themselves are very revengeful. So I've worked a lot on not taking revenge, not taking revenge, because I used to be very, very revenge, very revengeful. And I worked a lot on not, getting even and, 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 and working my issues with my creator instead of working and, dump and getting trying to get even and, punt and, and give, get back at people so I can get the last laugh. And that's really a very, very low consciousness. When you want to get revenge, it's a very, it's, it means you're not in a good, in a good conscience. Do you want me to show the books again? Yes, here's the book again, Letting Go. This is, again, this, this, nobody, this should be in every single book. You should hold this book in your... There's not there's this guy who came out. He's not Jewish, David Hawkins, but he really um, I, I can't say enough about this book. It talks about every single emotion. It tells you how to let it go, and it's really the the path to bittel. And in Judaism, we use bittel. We use we use the concept of surrender, which is bittel, which is a Hasidic concept. And the other one is, is never never get angry again. It's all about dealing with strategies, etc., etc. Remember. The reason why we can let things go is because you have to be humble to let things go. For example, we know Moshe Rabbeinu. He was, uh, uh, Miriam spoke about him and Aaron spoke about him. And what did the, Torah, the Torah says, Moshe forgave them easily because Moshe was the most humblest person. Moshe was not a lazy person. Moshe Rabbeinu was the most humblest person in the world because he was doing it all for everybody else. It wasn't about him. Even if they spoke about him, he didn't get angry. He wanted to win for everybody else. It wasn't about him. Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu really was the leader because all he was doing is for the people. He, he didn't care if they spoke about him. And his only issue was that he did get angry when, when a few times in his life, Moshe, instead of speaking to the rock, what did Moshe do? He, he hit the rock. So that was the one error that didn't get him to Eretz Yisrael because he lacked the patience. He was triggered by... 
He was triggered by everybody. So what happens? He lacked patience and he hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And from that situation, he didn't get a terror to stroll. So you could see on people in that high level how careful we have to. We have to be careful with anger. So remember, things you have to work on. Losing control, not trying to be so controlling. Give your spouse space. When you're upset, don't use emotional... Uh, don't use... Um, stop uh, stop uh, uh, blackmailing the person by not talking to them. Okay, take a break, but don't use this. This is a very... Children do this. We don't, we don't need to use emotional blackmail. That's not going to help. Another thing we spoke about this class is very, very important to appreciate your spouse. Whatever they do for you, don't just come home from work saying, I, I, go, I make the money, she just cleans the house. Have you been with four kids? You know what it is to deal with that? It's a whole different world. Appreciate them. Because what happens is if you come home, you don't appreciate what your spouse does, they start thinking that person doesn't care. He builds resentment. And then a little movie starts going on. I'm never appreciated. I'm never, nothing I do is good enough. And this is where the beginning of Shalom Bayit starts. But if you start with it, just a simple word like an appreciation, you know, thank you for letting me come to a house that's clean. <clears throat> thank you for taking care of the kids today. You know, even if you do make money, it doesn't mean because you make money, you can treat other people the wrong way. And you can, you know, dump your, this is not the way you, you this is not the Torah, the Torah's message. Making money doesn't mean you could be a, you know, rude to people just because you have money. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing. The opposite, you should be able to be more grateful because God has provided you with money. So it's very, very important that you do have this concept of constant appreciation for your spouse because resentment is the number one marriage killer. When you start having resentment, people start cutting off, they disconnect, and it just builds up and builds up. So remember, whoever you're dating, whoever you're married to, just say, I'm, thank I'm so grateful for this, I'm so grateful for that, I'm so grateful for that, I'm so grateful for that. Just be constantly grateful for everything they do, and then they'll be appreciated. And I promise you, when a person feels appreciated, all they want to do is do more things for you. But when a person doesn't feel appreciated, what do they want to do? They want to cut. Okay, you don't like this, and I'm not doing this for you. Next time you know I'm going to the gym instead of cleaning the house, you worry about it. You're turning the problem for no reason. You have to find a way to appreciate you, each other. Appreciate your husband that he's going to work. Appreciate your, your wife that she's doing this. This appreciation will help you fix the resentment issue, which is probably the number one problem. I would say today in marriage, if nobody feels like they're appreciated. If you just ask around, it's the same question, a lack of appreciation. This is what we're here. We're here to be appreciated and we don't want to use emotional blackmail. So I think we'll end the class. If anybody has any other questions, I think that will be should be the end of the class. Good. Okay, guys, have a great night. May Hashem bless all, bless you all. Again, December sixteenth, we're having an event in Brickell, and we're also having another event with Rabbi uh, Kramer Bizrat Hashem on the, uh, December nineteenth uh, or twentieth in Aventura. All right, guys. Good night. Have a great night.